Today's video is going to be about air compressors. I know we usually talk about engines, but these are engine adjacent. They uh, are usually driven by the engine, either via a belt or in the case of this one right here, off of the engine's gear train. You can see the gear right there. This is a Bendix one uh, that came off of an international DT-466. Uh, but you can also find uh, engine manufacturers that supply their own compressors. So when we're looking at this guy right here, first we got to understand that the air compressor is what's going to deliver air pressure to the air tanks on a truck, right? So you have air brakes. A lot of people know about air brakes, but you also have air suspension. You have air uh cabs that are uh, have suspension airbags on them you have fifth wheels that are air operated seats that are air operated so lots of different air operated components rely on this guy making air pressure so uh, a couple of things so this specific air compressor would be a two-cylinder right so think of an air compressor as an engine that has no power stroke this uh, air compressor has a crankshaft that runs off of this gear runs through here there's two connecting rods attached to two pistons then those pistons travel up and down inside of cylinder bores and they pull in air through here the air comes in it compresses that air and then that air gets sent out through a discharge line to the air tanks you can always kind of tell which of the two is the inlet and the outlet because the outlet's under pressure and so that's going to have the threaded uh, fitting whereas the inlet isn't under pressure so it's usually just going to be a, a hose with the hose clamp on it uh, so when this thing is building air pressure it's sending that air pressure to the tank and then you're typically going to have a governor that is going to determine how much air pressure so this thing is receiving a feed signal from the air tank letting it know hey or sometimes from the air dryer itself letting it know, hey, I got this much pressure, we need to start unloading this uh, compressor and not letting it send air. And then once air pressure drops to a certain point, this thing is spring loaded. And once the air pressure drops to a certain point, you reach what's called cut in pressure. Cut in pressure is when the compressor starts sending air back to the tanks again. So typically on a big truck, you're looking at around 120 PSI for cut out and around uh, 90, or so give or take a little bit for cut in pressure so when we're looking at this governor i've seen many many air compressors over the year replaced because of air charge issues when it wasn't actually the air compressor it was the much less expensive governor here that was the problem so we always want to diagnose the governor before we condemn an air compressor so if we have air pressure issues uh, one of the things is that <coughs> excuse me the unloading valve at the air at the air dryer is controlled by this governor as well so every time you reach cutout pressure that's when you hear that psh that the trucks make when they're releasing that air out of the dryer right so uh if you have constant purging like every couple minutes you hear psh, 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 that could be an indication that you have an air leak that's making this governor here cycle from cut in to cut out over and over again because of that leak uh, so that's one of the things you might run into with the uh, leaks and governors and, and air dryers. But back to the compressor itself, uh, most of the time these compressors are pretty reliable. Every once in a while they'll wear out and you have to replace them. And one of the best ways to know if an air compressor gets worn out is by how much oil is passing from the crankcase in here, getting past the pistons and then coming out and going to the, the air tank. And one of the things that Bendix has developed is something called a basic test where we uh, know that when we compress the air, it's going to get hot, which means this compressor runs at a pretty hot temperature. And when that happens, it causes the oil in this crankcase down here to vaporize. And some of that oil vapor goes past the pistons and the cylinder walls and gets up into this area. One of the things that is normal for an air compressor is that they're not normally going to look this clean up at the top, right? Normally there's gonna be oil residue around here and that's okay because these things will seep oil vapors through all these little threads and stuff and you're allowed to have some. Bendix actually says that as long as the oil isn't seeping down here to this data plate, then it's okay, don't replace the compressor. But what we're concerned about is how much oil is passing through this system coming out of this discharge and ending up in the tank. 
So on the basic test that Bendix devised, you're gonna tell the driver of a truck not to drain his air tanks for about 30 days. After 30 days, you're gonna drain the air tank and measure in a cup how much oil you collected when you drain that tank. And Bendix supplies a chart that says, you know, for high air use trucks, you can't have more than this much oil. For low air use trucks, you shouldn't have more than this much oil. And when you exceed that amount of oil, that's a good indicator of wear in the compressor, letting you know that it's time to change it out. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind though, that uh, your compressor may not be worn too bad. It may be an issue where you're getting the oil hotter than normal. So if your engine is running hot or overheating, that could cause excessive oil getting through here as well. Plus any restriction of air coming into the inlet, like a restricted air filter, a pinched line, is gonna cause the heat to build up inside this as well. So you always wanna eliminate overheating of the engine and restrictions on the inlet line as suspects before you condemn the compressor over a basic test. So I hope this helped uh, clear up some of the things with air compressors, what they're for, how they operate, what the governor does. Um, if you have any questions about air compressors, please put them in the uh, comments and I will get back to you. Thank you for watching, bye.